my son is a member of my family, and your promise is the truth. You are the wisest of the wise. The myth of intercession. He said, O oh, Noah, he is not of your family. It is unrighteous to ask me for something you do not know. I enlighten you, lest you be like the ignorant. The footnote says, intercession is Satan's most effective bait to entice people into idol worship. However, Abraham could not help his father, nor could Noah help his son, nor could Muhammad help his own relatives. One of the most precious gifts that God has bestowed upon us is our real family of believers. And we must be able to distinguish and identify those who are our real family from those who are not. Over the past 20 years, I've seen many people come and go, people who I thought were part of my real family, but like Noah, I found out that they weren't. So the definition of family describes, this definition describes our family uh, the best. It's a group of people united by certain convictions, okay? And we are, we're united by those convictions. What it boils down to are these convictions that the true believers share are all about upholding God's absolute authority under all circumstances. That's what it's about. So I'm going to talk about these convictions a little later on, but I want to talk about why it's such an important subject and why it's so important for us to understand. The short answer is because our eternal lives depend on it, right? Let's see if I can get this to work. Maybe not. Thank you. Hey, that's much better. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Surah 3, verse 28. Choose your friends carefully. The believers never ally themselves with the disbelievers instead of the believers. Whoever does this is exiled from God. Exempted are those who are forced to do this to avoid persecution. God alerts you that you shall reverence him alone. To God is the ultimate destiny. The inevitable test. Did you think that you'll be left alone without God distinguishing those among you who strive and never ally themselves with God's enemies or the enemies of his messenger or the enemies of the believers? God is fully cognizant of everything you do. If you have to make a choice, O oh, you who believe, do not ally yourselves even with your parents and your siblings if they prefer disbelieving over believing. Those among you who ally themselves with them are transgressing. 924, important criterion. Proclaim if your parents, your children, your siblings, your spouses, your family, the money you have earned, a business you worry about, and the homes you cherish are more beloved to you than God and his messenger and the striving in his cause, then just wait until God brings his judgment. God does not guide the wicked people. The footnote, says, the footnote says, since the odds are overwhelming against any human being to actually believe and devote the worship to God alone, it is virtually impossible to see a whole family believe. Thus, most believers have been faced with the question, either me or God and his messenger. This question is consistently stated by spouses of the believers or their parents, their children, etc. Consistently, the believers made the right choice. This is a mandatory test for all believers. Okay? Everyone has to go through this. And 29, 2 and 3 talks about that test. So as we see from these verses, it's imperative that we're able to recognize who the disbelievers, the hypocrites, and the enemies of God are. So we will never ally ourselves with them instead of the believers or befriend those who are fighting us because of our belief. Malcolm, um, can you do the... Thank you. Next slide. Thank you. 5822, again, it talks about our lives, our eternal lives. Run for your life. 5822. 
you will not find people who believe in God and the last day befriending those who oppose God and his messenger, even if they were their parents or their children or their siblings or their tribe. For these, he decrees, decrees faith into their hearts and supports them with inspiration from him and admits them into gardens with flowing streams wherein they abide forever. God is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. These are the party of God. Most assuredly, God's party are the winners. So 4, verse 115, As for him who opposes the messenger, after the guidance has been pointed out to him, and follows other than the believer's way, we will direct him in the direction he has chosen, and commit him to hell with a miserable destiny. And for those who couldn't recognize their family, Okay, these are the words on the day of resurrection. The day will come, this is sort of 25 through 20 through 30, 27 through 30. The day will come when the transgressor will bite his hands in anguish and say, Alas, I wish I had followed the path with the messenger. Alas, woe to me, I wish I did not take that person as a friend. He has led me away from the message after it came to me. Indeed, the devil lets down his human victims. The messenger said, My Lord, my people have deserted this Quran. So now that we understand why it's so crucially important to recognize our real family, we must know how to recognize our real family. What are their convictions? God points out in the Quran exactly what to look for. I mean, God has made it perfect and simple for us to understand who they are and perfectly easy for us to uphold. He's given us the traits, the qualities, the attributes of our real family so we can identify them, so we can recognize them. First of all, and step number one, we must pray to God to help us recognize them. Fortunately, we are already doing this 17 times a day, at least. Right? MashaAllah. Sir Juan, can you go to the next slide? Malkan, thank you. Sir Juan, 6 and 7. Guide us in the right path. The path of those whom you blessed. Not of those who have deserved wrath, nor of the strayers. Also, as the definition of family describes, the real family are united. Okay? So 3, verse 103, believers are united. You shall hold fast to the rope of God, all of you, and do not be divided. We call God's blessings upon you. You used to be enemies, and he reconciled your hearts. By his grace, you became brethren. You were at the brink of a pit of fire. And he saved you therefrom. God thus explains his revelations for you that you may be guided. This unification is a natural process. It happens automatically. It's a fact, a law. The truth can never be divided. Whoever decides to uphold other than the truth and steadfastly perseveres in doing so has taken the position of a divider and thus disobeyed God. So as long as we stick steadfastly, persevere to the truth, okay, we cannot be called dividers. You cannot divide the truth. So 42, 13, and 14, only one religion. He decreed for you the same religion decreed for Noah and what we inspired to you and what we decreed for Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. You shall uphold this one religion and do not divide it. Monotheists, monotheists versus idol worshippers. The idol worshippers will greatly resent what you invite them to do. God redeems to himself whomever he wills. He guides to himself only those who totally submit. Ironically, they broke up into sects only after the knowledge had come to them. 
due to jealousy and resentment among themselves. If it were not for a predetermined decision from your Lord to respite them for a definite interim, they would have been judged immediately. Indeed, the later generations who inherited the scripture are full of doubts. So what are some of the other convictions and the traits? Thank you, Malcolm. In 2.165, God tells us, those who believe love God the most. In 26.89, only those who come to God with their whole heart will be saved. 37.40, only God's servants who are absolutely devoted to him alone will be saved. And Surah 2, verse 67, the heifer. Moses said to his people, God commands you to sacrifice a heifer. They said, are you mocking us? He said, God forbid that I should behave like the ignorant ones. Well, I want to focus on the footnote here because this is an important trait. It says, although this surah contains important laws and commandments, including the contact prayers, fasting, hajj pilgrimage, and the laws of marriage, divorce, etc., the name given to the surah is the heifer. This reflects the crucial importance of submission to God and immediate, unwavering obedience to our Creator. Such submission proves our belief in God's omnipotence and absolute authority. And this, from Appendix 2, is also a trait of the believers. It's not up here, but I'm going to read it. This is at the end of Appendix 2. It's entitled, Mercy from God, 21107. When the believers are faced with a problem, they develop a number of possible solutions, and this invariably leads to considerable bickering, disunity, and disarray. Anybody seen that? Yeah. Yeah, quite often, unfortunately, our ego. Um, we learn from 2151, 3164, and 2107 that it is but mercy from God that He sends to us messengers to provide the final solutions to our problems. We learn from 4251 that God sends His messengers to communicate with us and to disseminate new information. Hence, the strong injunction in 465 and verse 80 to accept without the slightest hesitation the teachings delivered to us through God's messengers. Another trait of the true believers is that they love and hate for the sake of God. Okay? And we have Abraham as a good example. Okay? In Surah 60, verse 4, it says, A good example has been set for you by Abraham and those with him. They said to their people, We disown you and the idols that you worship besides God. We denounce you and you will see nothing from us except animosity and hatred until you believe in God alone. However, a mistake was committed by Abraham when he said to his father, I will pray for your forgiveness, but I possess no power to protect you from God. Our Lord, we trust in you and submit to you to use the final destiny. Um, we stop there. Tubu Elala. Let's repent. We praise God and bear witness there is no other God beside God. He is one and has no partners. Thank you, Makan. We are united by our love for God, by our total devotion to God, and our unwavering obedience to God. That's what unites us. You know, it's interesting, um, it's just uh, kind of weird, when I was coming, when I was flying here, I kept seeing the word United. In fact, we, <laughs> we flew here, we flew here on United Airlines, right? 
kept seeing it everywhere, you know? It was like a reminder, reunited, united, okay? And even I, my wife was playing that, um, what's that called? Cookie, cookie words or something? Yeah, she was on my phone, on my phone. I looked over, this is interesting. I looked over and I'm like, what is she doing on my phone, okay? You're not gonna believe it. At the top of the phone, it said United. That's the word I saw. It's like, it's fun all. United again. Okay, that's the message. We are united by our love for God, by our total devotion to God, and our unwavering obedience to God. That's our real family. What this means is that the true believers are willing to do anything for God, right? Are we willing to do anything for God? Yes. That's what unites us. Including killing our ego. Which, as the messenger of the covenant points out, is one of the last gods that we have to get rid of. It's difficult. But with God's help, it's very possible. It takes work. Unfortunately, most people are not able to overcome this, and consequently, they are proven to be liars. From 29, 2, and 3, right? They're proven liars. 2, verse 54, kill your ego. Recall that Moses said to his people, O oh, my people, you have wronged your souls by worshiping the calf. You must repent to your creator. You shall kill your egos. This is better for you in the sight of your creator. He did redeem you. He is the redeemer most merciful. The footnote reads, it is the ego that led to Satan's fall. It is the ego that caused our exile to this world. And it is the ego that is keeping most of us from redemption to God's kingdom. 4523, a common form of idolatry, the ego as a god. Have you noted the one whose god is his ego? Consequently, God sends him astray, despite his knowledge, seals his hearing and mind, and places a veil on his eyes. Who then can guide him after such a decision by God? Would you not take heed? This is the consequence of not being able to kill our ego. As I mentioned earlier in Surah 4, verse 115, there is what God calls the believer's way that we must follow. This means that we strictly uphold the laws and commands of God. It's about the way we act and behave, the way we talk, the way we look, and what we stand up for. Thank you, Malcolm. So I'm going to go through some of, the, some of these verses. I'm not going to read them all. Okay, but I wanted to show them to you. But the following diverse, these verses describe that way, okay? The traits and the qualities that we must have, okay? To follow the believer's way. 50 verse 31, uh, I'll just read 33. They reverenced the most gracious in their privacy and came wholeheartedly. Abraham. Among his followers was Abraham. He came to his Lord wholeheartedly. Surah 6, 162. I tried to say this every day. My contact prayer salat, my worship practices, my life and my death are all devoted absolutely to God alone, the Lord of the universe. Surah 9, verse 112. The believers, they are the repenters, the worshipers, the praisers, the meditators, the bowing and prostrating, the advocators of righteousness and forbidders of evil, and the keepers of God's laws give good news to the believers. We can check ourselves, right? We can see. Do we have these convictions? Do I love God the most? Do I do these things in my life? We have to be self-critical, constantly checking ourselves. So 8 verse 2. The true believers are those whose hearts tremble when God is mentioned, and when his revelations are recited to them, their faith is strengthened, and they trust in their Lord. Okay? I mean, it's interesting. I don't know about you guys, but when I hear, like on, the, on TV, you know, if I'm not paying attention, I hear the word God. It's like, you know, I, I stand at alert. I'm, you know, I'm like, did I just hear somebody say God? Because it's, 
you know, it's not common, really. It's not common for people to be talking about God, you know. Unfortunately, a lot of them are blasphemies, okay, or they're making jokes. But point is, you know, these, these are the things because we're, we're happy to hear the word God, right? Mashallah. 4829, qualities of the believers. Muhammad, the messenger of God and those with him, are harsh and stern against the disbelievers, but kind and compassionate amongst themselves. You see them bowing and prostrating as they seek God's blessings and approval. Their marks are on their faces because of prostrating. You know this verse is in the index under happy faces? Did you know that? Happy faces because their marks, this happiness, this smile, this joy that people see, this light that people like, What's wrong with that person? Why is he so happy? Right? Why is he so happy? <clears throat> Mashallah. Um, thank you, Malkan. Uh, he knows what I'm, before I even say something, he's going to, thank you, Malkan. Mashallah. So these are traits of the believers, attributes of the righteous, traits of the righteous, I mean, you know, God, mashallah, has given us so many, you know, ways to identify our real family, okay? And to be self-critical of ourselves and check ourselves, okay? They avoid, avoid gross sins and vice, and when angered, they forgive. They respond to their Lord by observing the contact prayer salat. Their affairs are decided after due consultation among themselves, and from our provisions to them, they give to charity. When gross injustice befall them, they stand up for their rights. Attributes of the righteous. You should eagerly race towards forgiveness from your Lord and a paradise whose width encompasses the heavens and the earth that awaits the righteous. This is the wholeheartedness, right, that we come. We're racing towards God, right? who give to charity during the good times as well as the bad times. They are suppressors of anger and pardoners of the people. God loves the charitable. And who doesn't want to be loved by God? Mashallah. These are the things that we can do so we can gain that love. Mashallah. If they fall in sin or wrong their souls, they remember God and ask forgiveness for their sins. And who forgives the sins except God? And they do not persist in sins knowingly. Their recompense is forgiveness from their Lord and gardens with flowing streams they abide therein forever. What a blessed reward for the workers. I'm not going to go through these, but... Um, Malcolm, can you... Thank you. So here's additional traits of the righteous. Dress code for the believers, right? The way we look. Quranic study groups. 1828. You shall force yourself to be with those who worship their Lord day and night, seeking Him alone. Do not turn your eyes away from them, seeking the vanities of this world. Nor shall you obey one whose heart we rendered oblivious to our message. One who pursues his own desires and whose priorities are confused. You know, when I first became a submitter, it was, it was a chore to get to every Quran study. You know, I mean, I know that I had to go and I was going to go. But sometimes it wasn't easy. You know, when, when the kids were young, I, I know it's difficult, but, you know, for the believers who love God the most, and we want to please God, right? We want to race towards God. It's not a problem. We need to ask ourselves, do the people who we think are our real family have these traits? Do we have these traits? So now that we know how to recognize our family, we know why it's important, we know how to recognize our real family, how must we treat them? Okay, this is really important. Uh, yeah, that's it, mashallah. Treat each other amicably. Tell my servants to treat each other in the best possible manner for the devil will always Always try to drive a wedge among them, right? We've seen this again and again and again, okay? Surely the devil is man's most ardent 
enemy. So God explains to us through his messenger of the covenant how very important upholding this verse is. So I, um, I took an excerpt from one of the audios, and I just want to read it to you because it's really important. And um, if you have Solomon's app, everybody have Solomon's app? Everybody know Solomon? If they haven't met Solomon, introduce yourself. Solomon, raise your hand. Where are you? Oh, there he is. Okay. <laughs> this is an audio on his app. It's number 27. Um, and it's entitled Quran Study 1419, uh, Chastity, Surah 1747. And it's about 48 minutes. Okay? Victory. 48 minutes. 48. Um, so he says, Treat each other amicably. This is a commandment to all of us. And we have to be very careful because this is Satan's last stand. And then he says something about Custer's last stand. I'm not sure what he says. I don't know what the connection is. But anyway, um, he says, tell my servants that's you and I. Okay? Tell my servants that's you and I. To treat each other in the best possible manner for the devil will always try to drive a wedge among us. This is his last stand. You know, he's failed to stop you from believing in God. He failed, you, uh, failed to stop you from reading the Quran. He failed to stop you from being saved. So his last thing to do is to drive a wedge between the believers. Because this will be a violation of God's statement that the believers are brothers and sisters, that the believers are one family. It's a statement that God made. And Satan wants you to contradict that statement by being averse to some other believer. So we have to go out of our way to make it backfire on Satan. Do we do that? Do we go out of our way to make it backfire on Satan? Why, many times I haven't. I've fallen short of that. But we repent and we try again. If he tries to drive a wedge between you and another believer, you must reverse it. Okay? We kill our ego. We apologize. I'm sorry, my brother, my sister. Forgive me. Okay? That's where killing the ego and loving God the most comes into play, right? We have to. It takes work, he says. Because if Satan succeeds to drive a wedge between you and your brother or sister, the believers, he can point at you and say, look, he or she is not a believer because you don't have that brotherhood, sisterhood feeling. Satan will say that, and Satan is the biggest crybaby. He'll just look for anything to claim you, so don't give him a chance. End quote. Okay, so this is, that's what the messenger has to say about this. We see how important it is, right? Therefore, to make sure Satan cannot make a claim against us, we must treat each other amicably in the best possible manner and be appreciative of this precious gift God has given us. Just think about how fortunate we are to have such a large and strong community. MashaAllah. And think about how much difficult, how much more difficult it would be if we didn't have them. I mean, talk to some of the brothers and sisters that are by themselves somewhere, right? Just talk to them. And see, it's, it's difficult. I mean, of course, it's not impossible. Everything's impossible. I mean, everything's possible with God, right? But it's really, it's much more difficult. I mean, talk to some of the brothers and sisters. And, you know, if you don't know them, you know, get to know everyone, inshallah. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. Thank you. Appreciative versus unappreciative. Surah 14, verse 7. Your Lord has decreed, the more you thank me, the more I give you. Right? The more we're appreciative of the believing family we have, the more we get, mashallah. But if you turn unappreciative, then my retribution is severe. So 3, verse 104, let there be a community of you who invite to what is good, advocate righteousness, and forbid evil. These are the winners. So these are some of the reasons I believe that we're such a large and strong community of believers. Because we're appreciative of the real family that God has given us, and we uphold his absolute authority without compromise. And as a result, 
God showers us with this blessing. Surah 68, 7 through 9. Your Lord is fully aware of those who have strayed off his path, and he is fully aware of those who are guided. Do not obey the rejectors. They wish that you compromise, so they too can compromise. For those who are sincere, God makes recognizing our real family easy to do. If we listen to God, two ears, we listen to God, accept what he tells us, and uphold it. After all, we're continually praying for it, right? This is what we're praying for. And Surah 2186, God answers the prayers of his servants. When my servants ask you about me, I am always near. I answer their prayers when they pray to me. The people shall respond to me and believe in me in order to be guided. So to close, um, I, I want to reiterate that, again, we're united by our love for God, by our devotion to God, and our unwavering obedience to God. Okay? We're united. If we maintain and steadfastly persevere in doing so, okay, if we do this, God's promise will recognize our real family. Okay? There will be no doubt about it. Mashallah. Akamah salat.